Welcome back to Smoker Ribs. I'm Russ Jones. Today I'm going to be doing a green chili cheeseburger. I'm going to be making these with some hatch chili straight out of New Mexico. I want to thank Darla. You know who you are. I want to thank you for these peppers. We're going to get started right after this. <laughs> All right, so the meat I've got here, this is like an 85-15 ground beef. And uh, this comes from Matador Prime Steak Company. Now, most people use like an 80-20. Well, this is 80-15. And the reason it's 80-15 is because it doesn't have a bunch of fillers, a bunch of simulated fat or anything like that that you'll find in, in ground beef like you get in the supermarket. This is actually ground from prime beef. I'm talking about USDA prime beef. I've had this in the past. I've done videos with it in the past. Fantastic stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply put it down here in this ring. And I could not find my stainless steel ring. It's around here somewhere. I really like it because it's about the right height. So I'm using one of these instead. And all I'm doing is just pressing these out. Now, I'll be frying these in tallow, beef tallow, which is beef lard, so to speak. And my experience with that is you're going to have some shrinkage on these. They get smaller in diameter, but they get a lot thicker. So I'm going pretty thin with these. I'm going to go ahead and make as many patties as this meat will allow me. This looks like maybe a pound and a half, two pounds of meat. And I'll bring you back at the end of that. Now, Darla not only supplied me these, these hatch chilies, these were frozen when she gave them to me. They had already been roasted. And as you can see here, the peeling comes right off. What I'm getting ready to do is take and remove all this peeling here and clean these up a little. Now, she also gave me the recipe and I did a little research on this green chili cheeseburger. There's so many variations. And the way she does it is she makes like a, a uh, gravy pretty much out of these hatch chilies. And that's what I'm gonna be doing. So I just chopped up about eight cloves of garlic, right at a quarter cup of garlic. And I'm venturing out of her recipe just a little bit. I'm adding onions to the mix as well. So what I'm gonna do right now is just go ahead. And as you can see, this comes off very easy. You can put these under running water and get every bit of this skin off. And uh, I think I'm going to leave the seeds intact. This is going to be spicy. You do, however, want to cut off the end of your pepper. So let me do that and I'll bring you back here momentarily. I've got all the New Mexico hatch chilies chopped up. And in case you can't get to hatch chilies out of New Mexico, and by the way, if you see any chili like that it says new mexico chili that's what they're referring to that is the hatch chili but you could substitute this with uh poblano or uh, anaheim those are kind of more available in your supermarkets it's not going to be quite the same the hatch chili is is really good but it would be good enough all right i'm going to take two tablespoons of butter we're going to put this in our skillet we're going to melt this down our butter is almost melted. I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of flour. We're just making a simple roux here. We're not really gonna add any color to it. We're just gonna mix this in until we get a nice consistency. Add just another little small piece of butter. This is kind of thick. I want this to be more creamy looking, more of a creamy looking roux. And just that little bit of butter is going to do that. All right, that's looking pretty good. What I'm going to add in now is I have one half of a white onion. We're just going to let that saute in this roux for around three or four minutes until it starts getting kind of translucent. And normally whenever you add something into a roux like this, it's not, it, you know, it's pretty much going to quit coloring. It might add a little bit of color, but for the most part, it's not. I think I'm going to kick my 
heat up one notch. I've been going a couple of minutes. At this point, I've got about a quarter cup of garlic. It's kind of heavy in garlic. That's eight cloves to be exact, large cloves. Now also, something a little different than what her recipe called for, so I'm putting a little bit of cumin. This is one quarter teaspoon. We've got one quarter teaspoon of, this is a chipotle chili powder. Figured that would give it a nice little southwest kick. All right, so I'll be using a chicken broth. Usually chicken broth has got a lot of sodium in it. I've got the low salt, but I am going to add some salt into this. Onions, the peppers themselves, even the garlic requires a little seasoning. Also going in with a little black pepper. Everything is really releasing that flavor and that's the whole reason for sauteing these onions and the garlic and even the spices. It just releases all that aroma. Really smells good in this kitchen right now. So I've got this low sodium chicken broth. Just going to ease that in. I'm not going to give you any certain amount because what, I, what I'm looking for, only your eye can tell you. Once this returns back to a boil, that's when you know how thick it's going to be because of the flour we've added, the roux that we made. And I can tell you already, it's not near enough. Yeah, you just gotta kinda play that by ear. I wish I could tell you one cup or whatever, and it will probably end up being around one cup, but the best way is just to add some in there and just look at it. And even if you start off a little thin, as you simmer this, it's gonna thicken naturally as it evaporates and reduces. See how that's thickening up already? Let's see if we're even simmering here yet. Yeah, we actually are. I love these induction stoves. I tell you what, they get up to a simmer very, very fast. All right, now what I'm gonna do at this point is I've got one cup of the hatch chilies. That's what I needed and that's what I ended up with. I still have some in the freezer and I can't wait to use them on a different recipe. All right, so, and with the peppers. These peppers are holding a certain amount of moisture and they will be releasing that as they heat up. So that's why I'm not adding any more broth as of right now. I will eventually. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some more. Now the consistency is about where I want it, but I want this to cook. I want this to cook some. I want all those flavors to really get in there and infuse with each other and marry. And that can only happen by allowing this to simmer and cook for a little while. So I'm gonna give all this a good mix. And as you can see, it thinned it right out. But also, like I said earlier, this will continue to evaporate and it will reduce right back down to the thickness I'm looking for. Look at this gravy, man. This smells insane. I want this to actually thicken up, even though this is perfect for like a gravy consistency. I want it just a tad thicker because it is going on top of the burger meat. And uh, we're gonna try to hold that down once it goes on a burger by melting some cheese over that to kind of capture it. All right, so to make these burgers extra tasty, I'm going in with some tallow. This is beef tallow. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna spoon this off into our pan here, and we're gonna fry up some patties. So I'm starting to see a little bit of a shimmer on this tallow. I'm starting to see it smoke a little bit. It's telling me we're about right. I've already salt and peppered one side of these. Add a little salt to this side. A little pepper. And I should be able to get two of these in here at a time. Same thing, a little salt. I have a total of eight of these patties. I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these completely done. And then uh, I'm gonna bring you back. 
we're going to take some of this gravy. Now it's been cooling off, still a little warm, but it's going back in the oven under broil. We're just going to place some of this right here, and that is the perfect thickness after it cooled off a little. That way it's just not pouring off the patty. And this stuff is kind of spicy, so just use this however you like it. If you like it hot and spicy, go for it. So I've got some pepper jack here. Just gonna lay that on top. So this is going to broiler, gonna melt this cheese, get everything piping hot again. And when I come back, we'll put the burger together. We are ready. I'm gonna start this by creating a barrier right here on the bottom of this one bun with some green leaf lettuce. Just like that. Now any mini mini mo. Let's take this one with that little bit of char on the cheese. I always like that. We're going to take two of these purple onions and that's it. The sauce is under the cheese. This is all you need. Let's try this little bad boy out. Ooh man, fantastic flavor. I haven't really hit the pocket of uh, that Hacks chili sauce yet. Mmm. That just screams Southwest flavors. God, that's got an awesome flavor to it. I could smell it earlier. I actually taste it already. But in combination with this burger, God, that makes for a good burger with the cheese. And actually, it's not as hot as what you would think by the time you bring in the bread and the tomato and the lettuce and the cheese. It has more of a cooling effect to it. So it's not it's not a over overly hot I guess is the only way I could say that it's got a spice to it and it's really good it's excellent thank you Darla for sharing that I appreciate it now I've got to figure out a recipe to use the remainder of that hatch chili with fantastic and a burger is always better with a good quality meat and I've yet to be disappointed with this ground beef from Matador Prime Steak Company fantastic beef you really should give it a try I keep some in my freezer at all times thank you Matt absolutely fantastic meat hope you enjoyed this video hope you can give it a try until next time smoke your ribs